How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP tutorial. In this video, we are talking about JitGL Node and why it is such a useful object in your OpenGL toolkit. What does JitGL Node do? Well, it creates a hierarchical rendering group of GL objects. And what exactly is that? The best way I could break that down is with a metaphor. Think of the human body and think of the skeleton of the body. And let's just start with one segment of our skeleton, the finger. You have in your finger three knuckles and you can bend your finger in three different places. But your finger is then attached to your hand, which has four other fingers probably. And you can bend all of those independently or at the same time. But then not only that, you can bend your whole hand at the wrist. But not only that, you can bend your hand and move your hand and your fingers by bending your elbow. And that also moves your entire forearm. And every component you can break down and move individually. But it's then attached to a higher component that you can also move and moves every smaller component of that larger component. That is what JitGL Note does. It's the human skeleton of the GL world, basically. We can create different GL objects like a JitGL grid shape and move them around independently, send any kind of message to them independently but then we can also send it to the entire group. So let's just jump right into how that works. It's actually very, very easy. First things first though, we gotta start with our JIT.world uh, to render our open GL context. And as always, I like to say at floating one, at FSA one, and FS menu bar zero. This will make the window float, op do full screen anti-aliasing, and remove the menu bar when we are in full screen mode. The next step is to press T on your keyboard. It creates a toggle, which you can just patch into the inlet of JIT.world. Uh, and if we lock our patch real quick it, by clicking on this icon in the bottom left corner, we can then click on the toggle, turn it on, pass that one out into the JIT.world, which enables the rendering context for our windows. Now we can do whatever kind of visuals we want to do in here. I'm also going to create a JITGL uh, camera. And I'm going to say at position 004, which moves the camera back in the Z space. So basically any objects we create in this window momentarily will just be a little bit further away from us. So it lets us see the whole shape more. It's just a little, little quick trick to make things look a little bit better for this example. The other thing I'm going to add is jitgl.light and I'm going to say rotate XYZ 000. This is going to move the light source in our jit.world to be coming out directly from our view angle. And I just think that also kind of makes some of this stuff look a little bit nicer in this example. So now that we've got our setup working, let's create some grid shapes. The first, let's create a JITGL grid shape, and we're not gonna give it any kind of attributes or anything. It's just gonna be the sphere. And I'm also going to attach a JIT dot GL dot material to it, um, which is gonna give it this nice 3D look. And it's all nice and materialized. And with that camera and light objects up here, um, it's gonna use those as part of the rendering context. So it just looks like a nice, nice sphere right now. I'm going to uh, shrink the scale of the grid shape to something like 0.5 and our XYZ, make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to press A on the keyboard to create this adder UI object. I'm gonna patch that into the grid shape. This will let us dynamically change any of the attributes of the grid shape. And so I'm gonna change the position of the JIT GL grid shape sphere, and I'm just gonna move it over to the left. Yeah, negative one seems pretty good. I'm gonna lock that in by now updating that in the object itself. And there we go, we have our sphere over there. Um, and then I'm just gonna copy and paste this over, which will give us a second sphere. Let's change this negative one to a positive one so it's on the other side. And then we're gonna also say at shape cube, just so it's a different shape from our sphere. And we can see, yep, that is a 3D cube that we're now looking at. So now we're ready to look at how jitgl.node actually affects these things. And like we were just doing, as I was just demonstrating in the setup process, we can move all of these around independently um, by sending you know, the position message or whatever you're trying to change to that object directly. But with the JITGL node, we can also treat this as a group. So we're just gonna create the object, jit.gl.node, 
and we're going to look at these outlets real quick. This is texture output if captured and enable. We'll talk about that in a sec. This is the actual super important outlet of JGL.node. You have to connect this outlet into the objects that you want to put into this hierarchical rendering context. So by attaching this patch core from this middle outlet of JIT.GL node into our grid shape, this grid shape is now part of this node. And this node is that upper level in the skeleton that lets us send and control anything else in the group. Right now it's just the grid shape, but we can create another patch cord out to this grid shape, that is our cube. And now both of these objects are in this node group. Like I said, we can still move any one of these independently if we wanted to, but we can also then take the same attributes and send it to the JITGL node itself and move both of them at the same time, which is pretty cool, especially um, with these grid shape objects. Because if you think about, if you think about it, if you had like, you know, 20 grid shapes or something going around, you could do all kinds of really cool patterns by sending a message to the individual one, but then also moving the group as a whole. And it's not just GL grid shapes that this works with. It's, I, I'm pretty sure you can do this with absolutely any open JIT.GL object that we, that Max MSP has. Um, and it's just useful for so many different kinds of contexts of things you're trying to make in that visual domain. And it's not just position, it's any of the attributes of these objects. So we should also be able to say something like rotate X, Y, Z, and then rotate these around at the same time. And I mean, you could try animating it by sending the correct, you know, value and message to each grid shape. But, you know, if you, like I said, if you had 20 of these, it's, that's a lot of messages to, and patch cords, and it's going to get messy. It's so much easier to just put them all in one JITGL node rendering context, and then just send the message to that JITGL node. And you can then control both of them at the same time. It's so much easier. And that is kind of the, that is the main aspect of what makes JIT GL node super useful. But it's not the only thing that JIT GL no node can do. As I mentioned, there's this other outlet here that is our capture enable texture output outlet. And that is also a super useful feature because if you had something like this where you have these 3D objects and they are 3D objects in 3D space, but say you wanted to mix them with like a video and treat have that 3d look but treat it more like a 2d texture that is where this comes in handy the JITGL node has an attribute in it called capture and if we go at capture one that whatever these patch cords are attached to that rendering context it creates now becomes captured internally into the object so our grid shapes are now there that texture what we were seeing in this window is now an internal texture in this JITGL node that we can now patch out to somewhere else. So if we wanted to bring the visual back, we could attach it to a JIT.GL video plane. I'm going to say at transform reset too, so it reaches the edge of our JIT.world window. And if we just take this texture outlet and patch it into the JITGL video plane, we see this now. Um, and it's still, it's still treated the same, you know, it's still like it's the 3D space, but because we're outputting it as a texture, it's technically 2D. That lets us do a lot more of the video mixing techniques that we've talked about so far in these YouTube videos. Like I mentioned, it just treats it basically as a 2D texture. So we could do something like jit.gl.pix, throw this in here. Um, and I'm going to take this patch core. We're just going to run it through that into here. JITGL.pix is like the JIT.gen object that we talked about in a previous video as well, um, but it's for GL, so it works with texture objects, not just matrix objects. Um, and if you double click it, you'll see the default. It's just taking inlet one and it's adding it to inlet two. So we could just patch any kind of texture or matrix into the second inlet. I'm going to just do JIT.noise. Um, I'm going to say four, blow 32. And we'll do, I don't know, 10 by 10. And then we're going to send that through a matrix as well to upscale it. Uh, 
so we just get a really clean 10 by 10 window and if we just send that a bang now there you go we are now adding this 2d image to our technically 2d 3d texture um <laughs> That I, this feature is just really useful for literally this purpose. You are we are now combining 3D objects with some 2D objects to create just really interesting visuals. That's not something you could have easily done before, um, and it's really the capture that lets us do that. Um, and you see, I'm just messing around with just like connecting random things and trying random things, and all these patterns are very very interesting. I really like this one especially. That one's also pretty cool. So yeah, you just get a lot of really interesting patterns and then you could still, you know, send the messages to the JGL node to treat these as uh, three objects as well. So that's just a super, super useful technique that I use all the time when designing any kind of visual work in Max MSP. The last useful technique of JGL node that I really, really want to point out is um, going back to that skeleton metaphor, you know? If, if you're looking at this, this is just the finger bone. This is like one knuckle in the finger, and this is the other knuckle, and we can bend those knuckles at the same time to bend our finger. But what about the whole hand, you know? What if we want to attach that finger to the whole hand, and we want all five fingers? That's totally possible. You can do that because you can attach JITGL nodes into other JITGL nodes to really create a full hierarchy of rendering context. So say, you know, we have... We have this, we can copy and paste this anywhere that you have open available space in your patch. Um, and this is now basically, um, this is the exact same thing. So after copying and pasting this, because we have that capture one context enabled, this is still you know being treated as an internal 2D texture. So we're gonna just copy this JITGL picks over here as well, um, patch that into that. So run it through like that. And then we're going to patch the output of this JITGL node there. And now you see in this, we have both, both our images again. We have this one here that we can move around. And we have this one here that we can move around. And if it seems like we're moving both with that one, we aren't actually. Um, it just appears that way because of the sample object and how we're creating this specific visual. But we could move all of these at the same time. All we got to do is take a third JITGL node, patch this middle outlet into the JITGL nodes, and now this is the hierarchy rendering context for both of these. So we can send a message to any grid shape individually, we could send it into these groupings of two, or we could send it to the entire grouping if we wanted to. Um, just like that. Let's go back for a sec. Let's undo the sample stuff just so this is a clearer example. Let's make it multiply instead or something. Same here. Ooh, let's make it add. Let's see if that comes through more clearly. So we can move all four, or just an individual one, or our groupings of two that we made. Which is pretty neat. That gives us a lot of visual potential and animation potential in our JITGL world that we are building. And you can send messages to any one of these individual components and the whole thing at the same time. And that would really open the door for a lot of interesting complex visuals. So that's going to be that video. I hope you guys found this useful. I hope you see the use of JITGL node, whether you're trying to create this hierarchy of rendering context to build out some greater animation, or you're using that at capture one attribute to capture a JITGL object and export it or output it as a 2D texture, both very useful features and again, the JITGL node into the JITGL node to create even larger hierarchical rendering context. Also super useful feature. Um, if there are any questions about anything that I talked about, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Um, and 
If you learned something, please remember to like and subscribe because that's how I know you learned something. Uh, we are almost at all 4,000 subscribers as well, which is crazy to me. I, I never thought that I would hit that number. That is a lot of people. <laughs> um, so I really appreciate every single one of you who has done that. Um, and thank you so much for your support. Let's keep going. Um, there's so many more Max MSP objects to talk about. And on that, if you have any suggestions for future tutorial videos, maybe there's an object you want to learn more about or some kind of algorithm of sorts, you know, maybe an idea that you want me to explore. Um, I'm open to all suggestions. So please leave those in the comments down below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.